desire and determination may arise from DNA, but that does not, that does not mean they come down for any single gene. And many times you find yourself that you try to motivate your borders, but you see the same border crying over again, again, and again. You see, you see them repeating the same kind of behavior, whatever you do. You might improve it, but you will never change it. Because that's, that's what they are. It's in their genes. Endurance ability. The ACE and NFCL3 genes. I will go fast through this. And I want you to remember this name because those are, are very important genes that they relate they're related with, with, with sports. Performance of individuals in endurance and mixed aerobic and aerobic sports depends on aerobic power. Aerobic power has a strong genetic basis and contributes significantly to the performance of individual in endurance sports. Research has found one gene that is associated with the lead endurance athletes. It is called the ACE. Angiotensin converting enzyme, which is active in muscle tissue and regulates blood flow. Scientists from Australia, back in 2003, demonstrated that another gene, the ATCN3, is closely related to athletic performance. This gene produces the protein A actinin 3 expressed in fast twitch muscle fibers and is responsible for generating force for high velocity movement and is important for power sports. You have this table in your handouts and I don't want you to know all the terminologies about the variants and the reference numbers uh, but just watch the relationship between the gene and the biological function. And you can see some really important biological functions related with specific genes. Like the blood pressure regulation, muscle performance, lipids and glucose levels, skeletal muscle metabolic efficiency, cardiorespiratory adaptation to training. So take your time when you go back home and go through all this relationship between genes and biological, biological function that they are associated with endurance ability. And eventually this kind of, of information will be coming to you from this kind of, of tests. And you will be able to evaluate those kind of information and uh, adjust the training program of, of the athlete. Muscle performance. Muscle strength and performance are major factors for athletes involved in power, sprint, and mixed aerobic and anaerobic sports. Several genetic variants contribute to the ability for muscles to perform during intense exercise. Variants in genes affecting oxygen supply to muscles and energy consumption affect muscle strength phenotypes as well as endurance capacity. Muscle function is strongly associated with genes affecting muscle energy metabolism during intense exercise such as AMPT1. Another major factor for muscle fatigue is the rate of lactic acid removal. A variant in the MCT1 gene affects lactic transport capability and thus intensity of performance. On the other hand, a gene variant in DO1 affects positively anaerobic exercise phenotypes, enhancing muscular and strength. So, so many different information that personally I know nothing about. It's just a part of my research. And if I spend time to really investigate what each part of this gene is related with and try to make the plan where and what goes where and is associated with what and 
come up with a plan, I would need a lot of time and effort, and most probably years, to understand how to do this right. That's why we need those kind of specialists to help us and give us the right information that we need to help our athletes. And this is a table related with muscular performance and power exercise. Again, with the ergonomic functions related to specific genes. And you will see here like lactic acid clearance, muscle fatigue, muscle performance, rapid muscle contraction. Very important information related with muscles. Susceptibility to injuries, like my case. Individuals involved in amateur athletic activities or professional sports may suffer from sport related injuries. Preventive measures and corrective action for individuals at increased risk for injury include some of the following Avoid increasing body weight, correct misalignment with appropriate customized insoles, avoid wearing brand new shoes in hard surfaces. Look for reduced flexibility or reduced range of motion to fall waking up in the morning. Use grass trail instead of sidewalk. Soft pitch running, not recommended. That was my favorite. I love running the beach. I cannot do it anymore. I, I, do, uh, I can run. I can most probably achieve the same goals, but in a different way. So that's what we're talking about. I adjusted my training program on a different way, but on, on the same way to the top. Nothing has changed my goal. Nothing has limited the potential for me to be able to train myself in a correct way. I just do it in a different way without risking injuring myself. If involved in both aerobic training and weightlifting, perform aerobic workout first. Perform work, aerobic workout first. Avoid training uphill or excessive geometric or speed training. That would be good information for your personal trainer at the gym. Excessive stiffness of the posterior leg muscles, hamstrings or calf muscles can increase the load on the tendons. Increase warm-up volume and intensity in cold conditions. Increase speed and jump height gradually during warm-up. And the day after a game or for high-intensity training, reduce load on tendons using non-weight varying activities like swimming or biking. So all these are recommendations in order to be able to avoid increased risk of injury. I forgot the last one. Massage calf muscles and Achilles tensions after training. So, in the next table, you will see various the genotype that we mentioned at the, at the, at the beginning of the presentation. Um, and what kind of effect do they have on sports performance? And what kind of training recommendations uh, we give based on, on, that, on that effect? And we will not go through all this, of course. You will read it by yourself at home. Uh, but just to take the first one. The effect on sport and performance based on, on the variant that you see on the first column. Reduced endurance capacity, increased muscle performance. And the training recommendation is to increase <coughs> aerobic performance, to increase progressively but fast the number of training sessions on weekly schedule, and perform training for strength in high frequency with some maximum load. And you know, you have to understand that we are throwing a sport. We are throwing a very heavy object. And 
many times we are going to the gym and we don't do things right. We have four or five seconds to execute one shot. And we have to train the muscles to be able to function based on that training. in 
100 borders all over the world. So, and that's an obligation that I take in front of you right now, that that would be my next assignment. I would run this test on borders all over the world, and most probably I would work in TBF and in USPC and anybody else that would like to, to be involved in this kind of investigation and research. We need to find and have a better understanding what's going on with, with borders worldwide um, from, from the spectrum of genes. And we need to see if there are any specific strengths or weaknesses uh, related with, with our borders. And eventually, it will help us understand, build a better training program to help uh, the sport grow. We have to follow the technology, never forget that. And to end the conclusion from this research, in any qualities provide certain individuals an advantage in achieving athletic success. The important question is whether or not genetic testing techniques are likely to identify that innate advantage as part of talent identification programs. The promise of genetic screening is to be able to separate core talent from the usual interconnections of innate talent, talent that support and opportunities for training and performance. The genetic factors important for physical, motor, and mental traits are likely to be completely identified in the future. Imagine that. However, will identification of these factors in childhood contribute to successful athlete identification? We can anticipate that we can anticipate that athletes who carry a favorable genetic profile are more likely to achieve a higher level of performance. And that's how. <coughs> Questions? Yes. I know that it's not, it's not something that you're familiar with. And of course, I'm not a geneticist, so I don't have all the answers. But I would, I would, be, glad, I would be glad if you share your concerns or worries or questions.
based on genetics, should female bowlers be competing on the same level with male bowlers in competitions like PBA and USBC Open Championships? And then the second part of the question is, do females have any advantages? Uh, it seems obvious that males have some power advantages and others, but do females have any advantages? My personal opinion about uh, females competing with, with men, I, I totally disagree. I, I don't see any other sport that all of them they are competing together. And I, I don't understand why we do that. We need, to, we need to find a way to separate women from men. Women, they have to compete with women. Men, they have to compete with men. Of course, you would say that they are competing separately, but uh, uh, on the same field at the same time, but it's not exactly the same. If they were competing only by themselves, they would be affected by different things, especially psychologically. So, personally, I don't think it's a genetic thing uh, to separate women from men something that this is what it's supposed to be. It's, it's nature by itself. Now about the second question, there are arguments that women, they don't lack of speed comparing with men. And even they claim that women can overcome men in 100 meters race in the future. And they estimate that in 2150 based on the records that they have. Now, the way this progress progresses, women will eventually beat men uh, in the in the race of 100 meters. So there is a lot of thoughts and information about that. I'm, I'm not really familiar with all the information. I'm just giving you everything I know, just to trigger your own investigation uh, about this important uh, field. I hope I answer your question. I have a question. I would like to know if you think genetically you can replay. Okay, I understand the genetic athlete and they're going to be a, a finer athlete. But in the same aspect, can we refine that in a mental way as well? Because I don't think you can replace the heart of a champion or the desire to reach the pinnacle of a sport with finer genetics. I know a lot of finer athletes out there that don't have the mental game or prowess to get to that level. They're, you know, they're physical gift, physically gifted, but they don't have the mental aspect to reach that game. Is there something in this research, research that will link those two together? Yes, yes. Um, they, they came out of determination, um, positive thinking, the general attitude, uh, it comes from the gene. It's something that we can work on but it has some limitations. And in everything that we do and everything that we've seen here, this is the main, the main, let's say, conclusion, that we all can improve, but each individual in its maximum. And that maximum, it's coming partly, as, we, as we've seen from a very big percentage, from genetics. Honest opinion, I don't need that. Do you think a well-gifted athlete with a medium mental game can compete with a gifted mental athlete with a medium? No, I don't. Okay. Uh, nothing, nothing can overcome this problem. If you put uh, an athlete with 100% physical game and 50% mental game to compete with an athlete with 50% uh, physical game and 100% mental game, the second athlete has better chances. Um, along the lines of what uh, he was asking about the mental and physical aspect, I'm just wondering, um, the tests that you've done, are, are the athletes all aware of the results? Uh, I, I would be concerned with somebody who sees that they have a propensity for injury who's never been hurt before in their life. Now would be more, it'd be more away on their mind that they may become injured. 
when they never realized that there was that was an issue. And somebody who was deemed to be athletically superior, maybe they maybe they just assume that they're going to be better and, and it would affect their work ethic or how they approach what they do. Well, good question. Both this this is touching the ethical concerns, okay, about doing running this this kind of test. And because the information they, they go back to the app. I mean, that's why they run the right. test. Eventually, the information will go to the individual. And as long as they are kids, uh, they will never know. The parents will tell them, you have to do this, because I know you are good in this. But they will, they will never tell them, you know, we run the test. Maybe later on, they will, just to make their argument stronger. But in the early stages, I don't think that they would dare to do something like that. Um, if this is correct or not, it depends how the parent is handling the, the whole, whole thing. I mean, if you give your, your child freedom to live his own life and very carefully allow him to find his strengths and weaknesses by himself or herself, that would be a better way of handling this kind of Information that I get. Uh, what? Uh, what, what, is, uh, what is this test actually? Uh, refer to it is the person's ability. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the person's, the person's uh, ability to some sport. But then again, uh, you, you can screw up already on, on an early age if you don't consider that the peak learning ages, for example, of different motor skills. You, if, a, if a person don't have motor skills, it doesn't, the cheese doesn't give them anything, anything extra if the motor skills are lacking. So again, it's more about how you develop the entire, I call, product from, from the early ages. For example, my son is turning, next month he's turning three. So actually he's, uh, he's Peak learning age of certain motor skills are, are just coming now. So you the pet is going to suffer a lot. What we've seen in the presentation from Rob uh, earlier about different ages and what you can really work on and change on, on each different age. Uh, as far as it comes to, to screening and the results you get from there and the ethical concerns, you just need to be very careful how you allow your child to discover by himself or herself with your assistance uh, those weaknesses and, and strengths. And of course, it's, it's something really uh, severe over there, some really uh, uh, major injury potential. Of course, you would be more concerned and you would try to take some uh, measurements. But in other case, I think that each parent will handle it in a different way. What we care about as, as, as coaches is to really understand the need of increasing our knowledge. This is the only, only way 